What's up guys, this is Ian here, coach of your Ladner Lantern, bringing you guys the championship match for NCL Season 1 or the Numbasa City League, my own league. Uh, we are taking on my good buddy Cade and his Krabby Kadabby, so let's run through his team real quickly here. He has Mega Sharpedo, Tapu Koko, Infernape, Decidueye, Porygon 2, Bronzong, Avalug, Garchomp, Yanmega, Scolipede, and Alolan Raichu. Um, the only things I wasn't expecting were the Scolipede and the Decidueye, which I really didn't think were going to come. Again, I said in the team builder, Scolipede gets completely hardwalled by Celesteela, and I've brought Celesteela to every single game, so there's no reason for him to think that I'm not going to bring it in the championship match. Um, and Decidueye, he hasn't brought all season, so I really didn't see a reason for him to bring it. Uh, Alolan Raichu looks like a threat to my team, Infernape looks like a huge threat to my team, and Tapu Koko looks like a huge threat to my team. I'm actually not super scared to be on Mega, uh, just because I have ways to deal with it, even if it speed boosts. So, uh, But I am looking at my team and I'm thinking, eh, probably could have brought Rotom Mo. Rotom Mo could have been probably fairly helpful against this team. Uh, it would have been a really good special sponge against something like Tapu Koko. Against something like a Lolan Raichu, um, I think Hydreigon is still set up to put in some really good work. I think Celesteel can do some work, and I think Azumarill can do some work. Espeon maybe not looking that fantastic in my eyes. Um, I don't know, maybe Uxie would have been better there as like a utility mon to get up rocks or something like that. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to talk about my team, I guess, real quick. If you haven't watched the Team Builder, you should do that, because this is a championship match, and you really want to know what all my sets are. Uh, we're bringing a lead Rabombi, we're bringing a T-Spiking Mega Beedrill, we're bringing a Wakan Berry Celesteela, Banded Azu, Z-Belch, Hydreigon, and Scarfed Espeon. If you want all the rest of the details, go watch the Team Builder, because I make all the Team Builders nobody views them. But that's not, I, I actually don't really care about that. Uh, what I care more about is you guys getting the information about how I build my teams and stuff like that, because I think it's fun. Anyways, let's get right into the things here. So I'm actually going to lead with Beedrill, which was not my plan uh, right off the bat, but I did uh, reconsider my plan because T-Spikes look amazing against his team, um, especially without things like Bronzong hanging around. Um, Getting residual damage on things like Tapu Koko and Mega Sharpedo and Alolan Raichu is just really, really good. Uh, and he doesn't have his Absorber in Scolipede, so uh, I'm thinking T-Spikes are the play, so I'm going to lead Mega Beedrill here. And I'm just going to get up a layer of T-Spikes, he leads Infernape. Uh, because he led this, I know this is going to be Sashed. He's brought Sashed and Infernape before. Um, yeah, it, it's 100% Sashed, and he's just going to kill me turn 1. I know I know he's going to either kill me turn 1, or he's going to go for rocks. Uh, I think killing me turn 1 is probably safer, because I can do a ton of damage to him with Mega Beedrill still. Which may have actually been the play. Um, I don't really know if it was or not, but I end up getting a Blair t picks off, and he's just going to wipe me out with the Flamethrower. Uh, I'm going to go into Azu here, and I thought he might have switched here, just because I don't know if he's still Scarfed or not. But, okay, so I, I'm... 85% sure that he's sashed. Who knows if he's scarfed. Uh, so I think that he's going to switch an Avalok here. So I actually go for the liquidation as he's going to get those rocks and he stays in. Uh, which brings him, which does bring him down to sash. Uh, now obviously I'm abandoned into this so I have to tank a hit here to get a liquidation off as he's actually going to show off the Endeavor. Again that's pretty standard on sash and Fernape. And we're going to claim our kill with Azu. Uh, but unfortunately Azu basically has to die here as Avalok is going to come in here. Um, which maybe wasn't the play, to be completely honest, because he he did take some damage from this. Um, so we're just going to get a banded liquidation hit off on this thing. Uh, it's doing nothing to Avalog, as he's going to be able to wrap his spin away the T-Spikes. Um, I'm going to go into my Celesteel here, because I can get a Leech Seed off on this thing. Start weighing it down. Heavy Slime still doing nothing, as he shows off the Roar, um, which... It's probably in my favor to go in Espeon here, because now I'm in full, full health range with Espeon. Uh, I'm going to Baton Pass. I was actually expecting him to switch into Sharpedo, uh, because I felt like Psychic was an okay play against this Avalog, and I wasn't exactly sure what he wanted to do. I didn't really want to show off that I had Dazzling Gleam yet for the Shark, um, but he's actually just going to Avalanche me here. I guess maybe he thought he could live the Psychic. I'm not entirely sure if he could have lived the Psychic. I don't remember calculating that. Um, so I'm not entirely sure, but I just baton passed into my Celesteela as he's going to go for the Avalanche here. I'm not doing a whole lot because I didn't attack him. Uh, and he's still taking residual from the Poison and the Leaf Seed. I'm just going to uh, go for a double Leaf Seed here because I thought that he was going to either um, switch into something else or... Yeah, what did I think? I thought he was either going to switch into something else or recover. Um, and Leaf Seed just wasn't a horrible play. I maybe Heavy Slime was the play there as he actually roars me into Rabombi this time. Um, 
and he's low enough now that I'm thinking I can get a sticky web up and I can basically win the game depending on the on mega set uh, because with Tapu Koko slowed, Alolan Raichu slowed, and Mega Sharpedo slowed, um, that'd be really good for me. So I'm going to click sticky web here and he makes an amazing play that ends up probably um, doing a lot with the game, doing a lot for him this game by getting rid of my webs. Uh, with the rapid spin, and then he's going to die to the poison. So Mega Beedrill actually picks up that kill, which is really neat. But the fact that we don't have webs up now is really bad. Um, Tapu Koko comes out here. I don't know what set of uh, the Tapu Koko could be, um, but I'm kind of just gonna leave her Bombi in here. Uh, I clicked Boon Blast to get some chip damage off from the Coco because then I can go into Espeon and hopefully kill it. Um, but yeah, so that was my play with Quick Moon Mouse, and he's just going to knock me out here. It's not the biggest deal. Uh, Rubombi's job was to get up webs, and it couldn't do it, so we're in a really bad spot here. But I do have the Wakan Berry on Celesteela, and I can live a hit from this thing unless it's Specs. At the range that I'm at after Rocks, I live a Thunderbolt guaranteed. Um, so we're going to go into Celesteela here. I don't know what he was thinking, but he's just going to T-Bolt me, and I'm going to be able to get some huge Heavy Slam damage off on this thing. Doing about half with the Heavy Slam as now I'm just going to stall out another turn of Electric Terrain so he can't just bring in a Lolan Raichu um, in for free after I kill his Tapu Koko with the Protect there. Stalling out that uh, turn of Electric Terrain could have been really huge, especially if he was Terrain Extender as well. It may have uh, saved me the match or something like that, but uh, yeah. So um, Celestia is going to go down here to the Tapu Koko. Again, Electric Terrain stalling out slowly but surely. I'm going to go into my Espeon, and it turns out he's Scarfed, so we're Scarfed Espeon, and so obviously we know that he's Scarfed because he has sped us. I had to go for the Dazzling Gleam here because I can't risk clicking Psychic on this thing when Sharpedo's alive, um, but unfortunately for me, <laughs> uh, Psychic was actually the play, because then he still wouldn't have known if I was Scarfed or not. Uh, he probably would have gone Mega Shark anyways and just killed me, um, but at that point I could have gone High Dragon and done whatever I wanted, so um, yeah, that's basically the gist of things here. I'm a Dazzling Gleam is Coco, um, and he's just going to claim his kill on Espeon again. Now I can go High Dragon. Uh, he doesn't know if I'm Scarfed, and Thunderbolt isn't going to do anything to me, so I'm going to Dark Pulse him, and that does a lot to the Mega, Mega Sharpedo. Uh, this turn I know he's going to protect, so I actually go for the Z Belch. Uh, I probably could have bluffed that I was Scarfed in Dark Pulse or something like that, but I'm just going to go for the Z Belch and hit him through Protect, because it might kill from this range. Mega Shark doesn't have a ton of bulk. And High Dragon's got a really good special attack stat. It does quite a lot of damage, but not quite enough to kill him. Um, so now he's going to be able to get an Ice Fang off on me, as I'm going to be able to kill his Mega Sharpedo. No, I'm not. Uh, as he freezes me, which is just like really... Uh, I don't know. I could have killed the Mega Sharpedo. I didn't get to kill the Mega Sharpedo because he froze me. Um, because of that freeze, he's actually going to switch in Yon Mega on my Dark Pulse here. Uh, I didn't want to go for Draco because it's 14% like and he's still got a Fairy type up. Um, turns out I never would have had to click Draco in this scenario because Dark Pulse would have killed this, this, uh, sorry, the Coco, the Yon Mega, the Mega Shark at the range that it's at, and it'll kill the Lolan Raichu unless it's Cold Colber Berry, sorry. Um, I'm going to outspeed this Yon Mega unless he's Scarfed. I don't think he's bringing double Scarf against me, so I'm going to click Dark Pulse again as he just sacks off the Lolan Raichu. And then he'll bring in Tapu Koko, which is Scarfed, obviously, uh, to finish me off. So, uh, what we can learn from this is that... I should have killed, I should have maybe just killed the Avalug with Rabambi and then been able to get webs up on something else later with Rabambi, potentially. Or I should have just led with Rabambi and gotten enough webs. Um, clicking Aqua Jet on the Infernape with Azumarill could have been actually really good because then Azumarill still would have been really health healthy and I could have picked off something like this uh, Coco that's really low right now. Um, we do end up losing. I, Whatever, you know, we lost. <laughs> um, I'm actually pretty content with second place. We had an absolute tear to end our season. Uh, after losing week one and two to Matt and Cade, respectively, we went on a 12-game winning streak to make it all the way to the finals. Um, we absolutely crushed it this season. We ended up winning our division, which was a really close race. Uh, Cade went 9-3, and three, and I think Magic went 9-3 and three as well. Uh, was Magic? Yeah, I think both of them went 9-3, and three and we finished 10-2, and two, so we barely won our division in a really competitive division um, so I'm super proud about that uh, I think the team played really well I loved using Mega Beedrill, Celesteela I had a lot of members that were like close in kills um, Celesteela was in the double digits I think Hydragon was in double digits 
I'm pretty sure Donphan was in double digits, Mega Beedrill was in double digits, and I think Oz Azumarill was in double digits by the end of the season, so we had a really solid team. Uh, I think Girder maybe wasn't the right choice, but it turns out that Tauros wasn't the right choice either. Lycanroc Dusk may have been better than Espeon. Uh, in the long run, I think Espeon proved to be pretty useful, actually, because I didn't have a ton of special attackers, and so Espeon managed to put on a lot of pressure that way. Um, specifically against... Oh, there was one match where it just went in hard and picked up... Like, it put in work. Um, oh, well, I'll, I'll talk more about that in the season recap. Anyways, this is just the championship match, so I do want to say GG to Cade. We will be back for Season 2 as will Cade uh, to defend his title, um, and can expect season two to start in about a month ish um, i tentatively have the draft date set for june the 10th so we'll see where we go from there um, i'm excited to welcome the new coaches uh, and just at this the end of this I'll, I'll do this again in in the season recap but i'd like to thank all of the coaches that participated this season um, i'm really grateful to everyone in my the first season of my own league running it. Uh, I think things went fairly smoothly. We had a few hiccups along the way. We had a couple coaches that had to drop out due to some personal circumstances. Um, and we had a few uh, rule discussions that have now been sorted out and will hopefully be sorted for the future. Uh, and that is all for me. And I will see you guys for the season recap.